Hey guys and welcome back in this requested video by Mr. Mr. Muyayo. That's a, yes, that's his username. He he has like a fox picture on his on his profile. So I've received this cool request, which is, can you make a car with a 2.5 liter V10 engine? Yes, you have heard me right. It's a V10 mid-engined car, as you can see. I've chosen this kind of body, which you, which you will which you will remember. remember from a previous legendary Japanese car but I'm not gonna say the name of it but everyone knows it so this is the chassis as you can see it's a manual panels for the body monocoque chassis type with glued aluminium chassis material and mid-engine transverse engine placement why I did not choose the long ditchable because this 2.5 liter V10 engine did not fit with the long ditchables so I had to use transverse double wishbones front and rear and plus one quality on the chassis this is the body as you can see it's from 1987 coupe so yes it's an old design chassis uh, uh, not chassis it's an old design body but it looks absolutely magnificent for this kind of application plus one quality on the fixtures and the body quality the, i've chosen this blue slash silver color because it looks amazing with these like steel rims steel color not steel rims and as you can see these are the, the fixtures, these headlights, fog light, this front grille for the radiator in front, these rims, side mirrors and a vent here, fuel for the cab, these uh, door handles and these vents in the rear to cool the engine off. When cold air go in, goes in from here, cools the engine, hot air comes out even from here from these vents. Twin exhaust, another grille here to to allow the hot air to come out license plate holder here tail lights logo so it's perfect as you can as you can see here is the engine as you can see it's uh, yes why these are closed because I've, I've i've made two versions of the engine of this engine i made a naturally aspirated engine and a turbocharged engine the naturally aspirated made around 240 horsepower and uh, 240 horsepower is great. I mean, it, the car looks and sounds amazing. But I wanted a little bit more power, so I made another variant of the of the same 2.5 engine. As you can see, these are the specs: 90 degrees, 10 cylinder aluminium block, uh, 62.1 on the mill on the bore, 82.8 on the stroke, which equals 2,508. Yes, it's a stroker engine. It has more stroke than bore. Dual overhead camshaft with 4 valves per cylinder, aluminium head, same material with a variable valve lift. Forged internals as you can see zero quality, 10.5 to 1 compression ratio with 27 on the cam profile and 63 on the VVL profile. Variable valve timing for all the cams with zero quality, twin turbocharged ball bearing with let's see 35.5 on the compressor and 31 31 mm on the turbine, max AR ratio with 10 psi of boost, and an intercooler can support 400 horsepower and zero quality here. Direct fuel injection with twin throttle bodies and performance intake manifold and intake system. Premium 95 is needed, 13.5 air fuel ratio, and what else? Have? The ignition timing on the 65, 8500. I, uh, the RPM limit with plus one quality. The exhaust is dual with 2.2 inch exhaust diameter or 57.1 the exhaust diameter. High flow three way Cadillac converters with reverse twin reverse flow mufflers and bypass valves, of course, plus one quality. And this is the final result 306 horsepower and 272 pound feet of torque. This is how it looks. It looks weird, especially the, this tube here, but it sounds amazing. Listen. So smooth and refined on low RPM. Absolutely amazing. Now let's shove this engine inside the car, and yes, it's a rear-wheel drive transverse. 
dual clutch 7 speed gearbox with 281 on the top speed the final the final drive as you can see it's 4.56 to 1 and the spacing is on the 32 which is the best for as you can see it goes from 0 to 100 in 3.8 seconds which is quick but let me fix something here why is it with spin all right so now the wheel spin the wheel spin is 0.8 percent which is better still 3.8 seconds uh, geared lsd with plus one quality radio sport compound tires with 220s in front 235s in the rear let me see some stuff here because when you go back to the chassis and this is weird in this game when you go back to the chassis here when you press this button and and then get back here to the you know when you want to tune the gear and the tires and everything i don't know times change, 0 to 100 time change, the, the, the tire sportiness and drivability percent change, everything changes. So as you can see I'm I'm actually redoing everything. I'm not sure why. As you can see now I've decreased the, the brake rotor size. Yes I'm using a ventilated uh, discs in front with single piston not dual or three because of these stupid warning, stupid warning lights, I, I really hate these, and I'm gonna show you what kind of lights we have here. And you already, you can already guess from the previous videos what kind of warning lights I have here right now. Solid discs in the rear with thing single pistons. Let's see, we can decrease the size a little bit. All right, 52 here. All right, great. The brake balance a little bit to the front. 57% to the front, 43 to the rear, zero, zero quality. Now let's see, aerodynamics are fully clad, under tray with cooling flaps of course. And uh, 55 on the cooling engine, and the engine cooling and brake airflow is 100 with zero quality. Sports interior as you can see, two seats. Premium infotainment system with zero quality, no need for higher than that. Electric variable steering with electronic stability control and plus launch control yes launch control is important these days in every sport car uh, let's see standard safety standard tens i don't want to use advanced because it will make the car extremely heavy we don't like that standard springs with semi-active dampers and, sem and active sway bars as you can see now let's tweak the suspension a little bit because i think let me see if i can make it Better. Okay, so minus 1.9 degrees on the, on the on the rear camber gave me 100% sportiness and better sporting, sportiness value as you can see. All right, all right, plus one quality, and as you can see, this is the final result: 3.8 seconds from zero to 100, 277 kilometers per hour. And let's see, the car weighs 1,209 kilograms, which is which is very light and the car can do 39.2 mpg uh, actually on naturally aspirated engine the same uh, engine but but without turbochargers i made 40 miles per gallon yes 40 but when i stabbed these uh, twin turbos the, the engine economy dropped a little bit so i got 39.2 still great it's uh, it's very great it's very good for a sport car eh. i hate these emails Let's see what else. Uh, the car is very drivable, very sporty, and um, it's medium sport, medium comfort, medium I can say. It's nearly 40. Uh, it's prestigious and it's safe, of course. Um, it's not really practical. It's not, it's not a utility vehicle, and it uses nearly all the octane. And the engine is clean. Look, the emissions are low. The car is reliable. It it, it can do the quarter mile in 12 seconds. That's great. Brakes, uh, the stopping distance is also good. Everything is good. So, the design, as you can see, this is design 305.6 horsepower at 8,100 rpm. Aluminium engine, dual overhead camshaft, turbocharged. As you can see, everything is great about this car. I really love this car. Uh, let's see what else. Yes, the warning lights. As you can see, it says here the car load capacity is low. Actually, I went on the automation. Uh, Automation, we call the forums of the automation game, uh, and I I've seen a lot of people complain about these warning lights. The load capacity, the first light, the first warning light, 
this is not good if you are building like an SUV or a pickup truck but since we are building a sports car it's okay because as we all know in, in, real, in real life when you have a sport car you don't really put heavy stuff in it you, you don't go shopping uh, at the hardware hardware store and buy uh, wood, wood planks or heavy stuff or put, put bricks in it so it's good the car load capacity for a sport car it's okay if you have this one in mind but if you are building a pickup truck or an SUV or a normal family car no this is not good but this is a sports car so it's good also the second warning light is the engine bay fill factor the engine I'm, I'm not sure look at look at the engine it's not it's not really big but it says here the engine fill factor yeah that means the engine is big look it says here try using a smaller engine as you can see um it's it's good I mean it's not really bad but I'm not sure why this light keeps coming on even when the engine is not, not really big so these two lights are, are good they are good they are not bad for this kind of car because it's a sport car as we all know all sports cars have like big engines and inside of this the engine bay they are shoehorned inside them so it's okay as you can see the car works great and let's now move on to the times as you can see and I did it before which is 1 minute 19 seconds 56 and I guarantee you it will change right now look yes as you can see it changed yeah it's okay it's we are still in 1 minute 19 seconds but but since we are here let's hear the engine and see the car when it drives Alright, so as you can see it's still 1 minute 19 seconds 0.64 which is quick I mean it's it's quick 1 minute 19 seconds I remember it's like with the M5s and all this time I mean these quick sedans in the top gear uh, what called timing board or this lap time board alright so let's move on to the next automation test track and see what kind of speed I like always to see what kind of speed we will hit in this straight line here
all right then it's two minutes 12 seconds point 13 39 yes it's 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 good i mean two minutes 13 i think in this this track is very good and it hits like 239 on the straight line which is also great for for a 300 horsepower car but still it's light it's nimble and it's very very sporty and it, and it gets good mileage 39.2 oh my god this is like heaven can you imagine a sports car in real life that can get 39.2 mpg and let me show you the bargain it can only cost you twenty six thousand one hundred and eighty dollars that's it that's the price of it with ten percent profits to the company that's amazing it's still it's cheap turbocharged v10 engine with rear wheel drive dual clutch transmission with electronic uh, not, not not electronic with geared lsd pre sport interior with uh, premium infotainment system the car is stay it has good safety good brakes uh, very very good suspension uh, sport compound tires uh, aluminium chassis and panels what else do you want the, the car is perfect I mean and the engine is clean and it's reliable uh, it's very sporty very drivable 3.8 seconds with for only $26,000 and 277 kilometers per hour top speed so Thank you so much, Mr. Let me see, Mr. What, Mr. Muyayo? Yes, Mu Muyayo. Yeah, that, yes, that's his. That's his username. Thank you so much for you for this cool request. I'm really happy with the end result. And thank you so much, guys, for watching. If you enjoyed this video, remember to smash that like button. Button, hit it hard. Let me so let me see those likes go up in the sky. And if you are new to, new to the channel and you like my videos press that subscribe button because it will be perfect for you and I will I promise that you will enjoy every video that I, that I, that I release so thank you so much and I will see you very very soon with another cool video because I have a big list of requests and I'm gonna get on to it so thank you guys for watching and goodbye